So are we about to see 480 again on the SPY? Are we basically going to see the bears regain control in the later half of 2024? Or is this a complete fake out to basically have another PTSD moment for the bears to have the bulls come in, swoop in by the dip and basically rocket us to new all time highs? Good morning or evening, ladies and gentlemen, depending on when you're watching this. We're going to be talking about that today. We're going to be talking about the levels of the S&P broke, kind of some of the characteristics I'm seeing out there, and why I'm not going all full bear mode looking at this, but I am cautiously being optimistic about the market with the assumption that I may be completely wrong because it's a very, very interesting time and complex time in the market. So make sure you guys have bell notifications on and if you wouldn't mind, have the subscribe button enabled because, well, instead of mashing buttons and possibly uh, blowing your account up, you can smash the subscribe button and get the levels you need in order to know where we're going to be going and what's going to be happening. We did a week MD dive every single week, so you guys can check that out. It'll be pinned in the end of this video or down in the description below, so make sure you guys check it out. And if you went on mine, hitting the like button really helps out the channel, lets YouTube know that you like this and push it out to more people so they can also be informed and have a different set of opinion, you know, my opinion may not always be right and may not be correct at all, but it gives you a different perspective on the market and you should absorb as much information as you can. So without further ado, let's talk about the levels. 509 got violated completely this week where we didn't even, Monday was like, okay, oh, it's Monday. Oh, time to sell off, right? So we blew through everything. We rejected off the nine, blew through 512. We even had a gap up. Traditionally, gap was for selling, going to slam back down. Then we got Tuesday was kind of an intermediary day, but we just repeated Monday today, or I should say last night, where basically we gap up and slam right back down on the S&P. NASDAQ actually jumping over to there had a similar, exactly the same pattern, um, but it really came back to exactly the dollar amount of 4.3333 was the high of the day basically and just nuked right back down, cratering the new low, closing near the low. We actually finally got the gap fill. I said, if we were gonna close anywhere below the 50 here, I would be expecting a violation of 433 and subsequent gap fill. What is the gap fill I'm referring to is back here on the 20th that we created this gap on, it was around the PCA data time frame that we had and now we have completely filled that gap all gaps get filled in time and it just may take a very very long time before we do that and we have some other gaps down here that now the question becomes are we going to revisit 480 for the s p are we basically going to revisit some of these lower price points well first let's take a look at the news to see what on earth we got for the week so First of all, jumping over the news right here, we see Monday we got some data Tuesday, but we're looking mainly Thursday. So we have initial jobless claims on Thursday. Am I gonna basically suspect that that's gonna move the market? No, not really. I don't suspect that's gonna move the market. I do expect that maybe Fed, Fed, Fed Manufacturing Index may. However, if this comes in contraction territory, it could also move it to the downside and continuation of that downside. However, one of the threats for the bears out there is that you have a bunch of Fed speakers talking. Bowman, Williams, Bostic, all talking tomorrow. So all it's going to take is one single one of them to hint at that the narrative is not dead, that there's going to be three rate hikes this year, and that we're going to be data dependent or give enough information that the market construes it as bullish, and then we run up. Other than that, with the market is just going to be left to its own devices. So if we look at some of the things that I'm seeing, and then we're going to get back to the level you need to pay attention to in order to know if this market is going to close green on the week and what are we expecting, right? So another catalyst that we haven't really talked about is Netflix. So let's take a look at Netflix. Well, one of the problems I have from its previous earnings, it basically just kept running into this earnings, not really having a momentous pullback or very close to the 50 day bouncing between the nine day and the 50 day. So that could mean that we're basically setting up a very, very, very large coil, right? So this coil is just winding up to basically break out. And this is why I'm not going to play Netflix earnings just because I'm seeing stuff like, okay, J, uh, JP Morgan beats, but then sells off, and we'll get to them in just a second. 
and we are very close to violating that 50 day. So we easily could come back gap down here and then basically just keep on going. So that's what my concern is with Netflix, especially when these analyst expectations are not being reflected accurately and how the stock is moving. None of the banks really conform to that strategy I had. So therefore, I'm going to probably sit this one out. I may play futures in the after hours tomorrow and we'll cover that on the stream that we'll be talking about netflix earnings of course so make sure you guys stay tuned for that but looking at netflix i'm like i just don't have the confidence to play that now what could be the upside targets right so let's just look at a monthly view netflix's all-time high is sitting around the 700 dollars mark so that is within approximately from the all-time high 14 percent very easily could hit it if we coil up to the upside and if the options chains are maybe priced enough, I may take a stab at it to the upside, especially with all the analysts expecting an upside break. So again, Netflix could, depending on how the market sentiment is. So if we're selling off, I probably won't play the bullish side for Netflix. I may take a stab at the bear side. However, that would be going against the strategy. So I'm only going to be looking at the bullish side for Netflix with a good market reaction tomorrow. So going back to what I want to see from the market, right? And what you want to see from the market to know that we are basically going to be heading possibly back up higher. Well, first of all, we need to not make a new low. So we cannot print below the low of the candle today at 499.12. So we did violate the 500 magical number. However, again, this is why you have to pay attention to X P. X, not Y. The ETF pays a dividend, so therefore the price is adjusted according to the dividend. If we jump over to SPX, we actually did not violate the low, 5,007. So we have to basically violate SPY at approximately, and this is my approximation, a level of the low being 499 or 498 really. So if we start seeing 498 get printed, on the SPY, that means SPX has violated the $5,000 mark, and you could trigger a lot of selling. So again, we have not completed the gap fill on SPY, so be looking on out for a possible rotation around 497.21. If we sharply come down into that and then reverse back up, then I'd be looking for some upside targets, which my first resistance point is gonna be the 506 number because that was the previous peak around Today, uh, last night that we had, and we, then we're looking at 509, 510 as resistance points, or do we just get Netflix catalyzing us right back smack above the 50, and then just us continuing up higher, completely in nullifying the failed um, breakdown at that point, and just heading higher. Netflix has the potential to send us right back up above the moving averages, approximately that will be just looking from the close, or let's say we close midway on this candle, back above and gapping, that'd be easily a 2% day. So there's definitely a more catalyzed bullish reaction possible. But if we're closing below 497 tomorrow, then I'm basically be, hey, I'm not playing this bullish. If I miss it, I miss it, right? But the risk to reward is not set up correctly then. Closing below 497 would be an epic bull, a bear trap but I wouldn't be so confident as I am if we were running up into the Netflix and kind of just holding that level. However, the NASDAQ actually has, I believe, completed the gap and now we reject it off. So we're kind of in this no man's land between 433.33 or 425. So again, similar to s and I'm gonna be basing it off of where we kind of find our closing price. Are we closer to 433 or are we closer to the 425 and that area is going to be a key point for me. If we're below 425, hey, nope, not touching Netflix, get out, right? That's when we're confirming the larger move down. We're confirming the secondary leg down. And then we could find support at 395. And then SPY, looking, going to definitely be looking at 480, which was our previous all-time high. And where we basically broke to new all-time highs, that's where we should find support. But to me, if you're breaking below 497, then hey, 465 is in play at that point. 
and we do have extreme greed or sorry extreme fear not there yet but we are in fear territory and we are staying in fear territory so the same way that we stayed in extreme greed greed territory for quite amount of time then i'd be looking to basically say okay if i see this tick back to neutral then i may be saying okay we're getting the rotation but if we stay in fear again another data point that i'm going to be looking at how we're going to be looking on the close of fear and greed if we're seeing a neutral, I may play the Netflix. So it's going to be a very iffy play for Netflix tomorrow. And the other question you have to ask is, if any tension sparks off in the Middle East, what is this going to impact the S&P? Now, again, that has not happened. You can't predict when it's going to happen. However, you have to be prepared for that risk and make sure that you're hedging appropriately. And VIX is right now everyone's hedge. So looking at this, everyone was hedging the last two days. They've kind of calmed down, but we really haven't re seen a large retracement on VIX. So breaking below $17 on VIX would kind of signify, okay, maybe we're going to be start selling off strongly and really seeing a strong move in the VIX would give me more encouragement that this is a true um, bear trap, true by the dip moment. But until any of that evidence is presented, and last but not least, Apple, right? Apple looks like it's about to shatter its low and basically just head lower. So if Apple breaks basically $167 a share, hey, bearish side confirmed. Any of these subsequent triggers that I mentioned, that would be something I'd be keeping an eye on. And I will keep you guys updated on this in the stream. We're gonna be definitely talking about this. And I will keep you guys updated in the Weekend Deep Dive along with the next video that I do later this week. So thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.